Things were finally getting better for her. For us. She's just coming out of her shell and out this. Do you really think it's related to her mother's murder case? I hope to God it isn't. Montgomery's friend was very clear. She starts poking around her mother's murder, they'll come after her again. I can't let that happen. It's more than you can pay. Oh no, I cannot give you. You know, I sometimes forget that you live with this every day. Josh know about this? No. When did you start? Over the summer, when you're in the Hamptons. And how far have you gotten? Well, aside from my mom, there was also Diane Kavanaugh, Jennifer Stewart. They volunteered for her from time to time for the Justice Initiative. And then the fourth victim was Scott Murray. He was a document clerk at the courthouse. You know, Castle, up until today, I'd always run this on the theory that they got killed because of a legal case that they were working on. My mom requested a court file just before she was murdered, and that file went missing. Well, your mom must have had personal papers, appointment book, something that could tell you what she was working on before she died. Oh, I went through all of that nine years ago. There's nothing. Yeah, but a lot's happened since then. Maybe you missed something. Through all databases, the lab is getting us information as fast as we can follow up. I thought there was a backlog at the lab. I have a federal fast pass, so I get to jump the line. Currently, we are running 35 solid leads based on DNA prints, trace evidence found from both crime scenes, and we're running it through the FBI data matrix. The... You know, this could actually be our big break, only we may not have gotten to it if I hadn't recognize Margot's building in that photo, which is why I think each of you should watch some Wives of Wall Street episodes tonight for the good of the case. So, get to come over for a little viewing party? So you can badger me about what I'm getting you for Valentine's Day? No, thanks. I think I will pass. Okay, but I'm warning you. I'm kind of competitive when it comes to giving gifts. Don't feel bad if yours isn't as good as mine. What if it's better? Better? Mm-hmm. How could it possibly be better? Oh, I guess it just depends on what you got me. There are hopeful signs here, Castle. They've gone out of their way not to harm the girls. They want them alive. That'll give us time to track down whoever's behind this. How? Our main suspect is dead. The only thing Stevens knew is where the farmhouse is, and... We have no idea who we're looking for. The FBI is searching the farm for evidence. They're canvassing the area for witnesses that might have seen whoever was on the property. All of which is just another way of saying that we're back to square one. Won't be the first time. We're gonna solve this, Castle. We will find a way. I've done it before with less to go on. You know who told me that? I did. In a fit of irrational optimism. How can you say that when we have not one, but two dead DVD watchers? There's got to be a better connection between our two victims than that disc. Ryan, can you check in with Jason's family, see if anyone recognizes Val? Yeah, on it. Espo, why don't you cross-reference their records and see if there are any similarities between the two of them? You know, if there's gonna be pictures of us hanging up there, we should really pick them out now. You know, Castle, we could always use the photo that I took of you and Pet the other night. I don't know if that's how I want to be remembered. Castle, I was joking. There will be no photos of us on that murder board. By tomorrow, we are gonna find a connection between our two victims that will lead us straight to a flesh-and-blood killer. In the meantime, it's getting kind of late, okay? So why don't we just call it a night? You know what? Actually, we could go back to my place tonight and take some more photos. I might be convinced. Well, wait a minute. In every horror movie I've ever seen, having sex pretty much guarantees we will die. So, for the safety of us both, I say we just hold off. Are you sure? 
Is it possible our Ryan is involved in something scandalous and tawdry? Ryan? No way. He doesn't have dinner. Did you see the way Siobhan gave him that flying lip lock? Yeah. Were... Ooh, look, Jenny's pissed. Okay, well, it's not surprising when you find out someone you're in a relationship with is keeping a secret. I... Be cool, here he comes. Act normal. Act normal. This is not... I can't... She says that Bigfoot tried to break into her apartment on the second floor. Gentlemen, I hate to rain on your parade. Do you? No. But here's the reason that Bigfoot reports have spiked. Two months ago, TV show Mission Monster put out a million dollar reward for the capture and or proof that Bigfoot exists. Hmm. See, Castle, all of this evidence that you claim proves Bigfoot's existence is actually people angling for money. So you're saying it's just a coincidence that Anne was working with primates and mysteriously killed where big footprints were found. No, not a coincidence, just a hoax. If it's such a hoax, then tell me why I found this. I dug into her phone records. Turns out the last phone call she ever made was to Daryl Meeks. The Daryl Meeks? Who's, Who's Daryl Meeks? Meeks? Who's, Who's Daryl Meeks? Meeks? Just a world-renowned cryptozoologist. That's a scientist who searches for as yet undiscovered creatures. Such as unicorns and centaurs. Manchies and leprechauns. Dr. Meeks also happens to be the foremost authority on Bigfoot. And lo and behold, she called him on the very day she died. Still think Bigfoot has nothing to do with this? Perlmutter's got something for us. Why don't you guys head over there? Castle and I will talk to the world's foremost authority on Bigfoot. Is it just me or is this starting to smell like a John Grisham novel? A single car accident with no witnesses? Guys, this is a classic conspiracy cover-up. Though only a lowly intern, Pam stumbles onto something the firm is doing. Something big, nefarious. She has to be silenced only after the accident. Blaylock can't take the guilt or admit the truth. So his only bastion is to escape into the sweet oblivion of drugs. And then when Erica starts coming around, they realize that they're going to have to act by eliminating them both. But what are they covering up? Whatever it is, the only possible evidence is on Erica's laptop, which our killer took. Yeah. Wait, are we sure about that? Erica was meeting Blaylock on the roof, right? A guy who, according to the email, she didn't know very well. If I'm Erica, I'm hiding that laptop. Well, we searched the room. It wasn't there. Wait, do you guys remember the footage from the elevator? Yes. She went down to the laundry room first. And Lainey said that she found traces of creosote under her fingernails from the boiler room next door. The, the laptop's, laptop's in the basement. basement. So then, why would a professional assassin murder a therapist? Because as a therapist, she'd be privy to her client's deepest, darkest secrets. Secrets so explosive that simply hearing them ensured her demise. Right, what kind of secrets? Well, nuclear launch codes, that Moonwalk was a fake, that Roswell wasn't. Secret location of the cryogenically frozen body of Walt. Well, um, boyfriend checks out. I can't believe Charlie was spying on Anton Rinkoff and his organization. Any of them look familiar? Yeah. I saw about three of those Russians on the movie set. Mm -hmm. And according to Interpol, all of them got criminal records back in the motherland. Assault, murder, all kinds of bad stuff. I bet one of them found out that Charlie was a spy and they killed him. Especially since we know that Charlie was followed to the warehouse. Based on what? We tracked Charlie's movements by triangulating the cell towers that his phone pinged off. And then we used that timestamp to pull satellite footage of the warehouse. <laughs> How'd you guys get there? Chicken poop. Oh. Oh, whatever works. I know how you feel. But this case intersects with national security issues. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything here tells the same story. Angelo was a decent guy. Ten years ago, after some petty b &Es, he turned his life around. He volunteered with at-risk youth. He was well-liked. He had been recently laid off from his mechanics job, but he was still upbeat. There's nothing that explains who killed him or why, other than Emma. Castle, you're forgetting about Scarsdale. I think Emma's suspicions are true, that he was having an affair that some woman in Scarsdale killed? Well, something was going on in Scarsdale. Look at this. Three nights ago, a resident complained about Angelo's car. Why? 
How does Sully find anything on his desk? I don't know. He must have a system. I think that was once a bagel. According to Shauna's supervisor, all of her parolees were nonviolent offenders, and none of them looked like this sketch that we took off the neighbor or match prints that CSU got from the crime scene. So it's quite possible this had nothing to do with her job. Then why torture her? What could the killer want? Mark Castle, no crazy theories. Hey, so what happened? Um, missed him. Well, you know what? After a case like this one, I think a warm and cozy bath is in my future. Talk to you tonight. Sounds good. I think he's guilty because of his contact with the victim, the stalking, and his history of violence. I think he's guilty because of his contact with the victim, the stalking, and his role in the sinister conspiracy involving Freemasons. I can't believe you're really buying into that letter. I can't believe you aren't. I did a little research into the author of our letter, Mr. Theodore Rose. Did you know he was a 33rd degree master mason? So that makes him what, like a Freemason black belt? Way better than that. He was a patriot spy. He wrote codes and ciphers during the American Revolution, meaning this letter could be the key to finding the great secret of the Masons enshrined somewhere within the city. Why, because you want it to be? Partly, and because it's the only story that makes sense. Shadowy Brotherhood guarding Rose's secret for all eternity. Susanna got too close, so they sent their monk assassin to kill her. Well, I was looking through the records, and I found out there have been several Rose family weddings in that chapel. Susanna had even been there once years ago. She must have remembered seeing that stained glass window. That's how she was able to figure out that last clue when no one else could. And why Henry scraped it off her hand so he could be the only one that ever find it. So what's going to happen to the half dimes? Well, they were found in the chapel, so they belong to the monastery. Well, put the monk's vow of poverty to the test? Well, they've already passed out with flying colors. Because of the historical significance of the coins, they're donating them to the Met. Hmm. You know... It is believed that George Washington had those half dimes minted for Martha Washington's silver. Back then, before the revolution, it was illegal for anyone but a king to mint money. So those coins are worth a lot more than just their silver. They were actually more of a declaration of independence. Well, then it's right that they're going back to the people, like Suzanne wanted. Well, it looks like the CIA wrapped all this up in a neat package. Yeah, with a bow, courtesy of my father. At least Ted's killer was brought to justice, you know, in a, in a way. Well, Blaine killed Ted, but left his body at Coney Island. It was my father that moved the body. Now, he could have put it anywhere, but he took it to Ted's apartment. Do you know why? To bring him into our jurisdiction. He wanted us to catch the case so he could work me for information. Well, maybe he was just looking for a reason to see you again, and this was his way. I keep making the mistake of thinking he's family, but he's not. You are. September. What? We're getting married in September. It won't be too hot, it won't be too cold. It's in the Goldilocks zone, it's perfect. Wait, that castle, what about your book tour? Screw it. September. And admit it, you're having a little bit of fun. Hey, most of these guys I know, but, but who are the old farts? Uh-oh. I, Harold, we should... Ooh. Is that Zito and Ryan? Maybe you talked me into this. Just play the part, man. I am. You should, too. Snooky watch a great price. Uh, yeah, that sounds baby, what it is. Oh, you guys are legends. I've seen your picture in the papers. Hey, Harold, what do you say we go take that statement? I want Snooky and Ray to do it. I love these guys. Okay, fine. Snooky, Ray, take Harold to interrogation. What do you mean interrogation? I'm just gonna talk to these people. I'm no criminal. I can't believe you let this chick boss you around. You can see the entire bullpen from there. The charade was only supposed to last long enough to get him to interrogation.